Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Podcast Digest. This is episode 92. My name's Dan Lizette. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen. Before we jump into this week's show, just a couple of quick comments. Uh, I think I'm going to kind of start being like uh, Mark Maron. This is going to be my best Mark Maron impression where I talk to you a little bit before the main interview. Uh, and one of the reasons I'm doing this is that this particular interview has a little bit of a backstory. It was kind of a unique process putting this one together. And you'll hear about that um, in just a moment uh, once the uh, interview gets going. But before I tell the story... I did sort of want to take a minute and remind everyone uh, about Patreon, and I know I talk about it a lot, and I'm sorry. Uh, it's kind of a big deal uh, for the Podcast Digest and for me personally, uh, and I'm very uh, hopeful uh, that it's successful. There's a link in the show notes, folks, if you're not familiar with Patreon or what it does or why I'm doing it. Uh, head on over to that link, check out the profile for the show, and it sort of explain uh, the motivation behind it. But uh, one thing I want to highlight uh, is that I've started doing something new over on Patreon allows me to sort of do blog post updates uh, to Patreon supporters. So those of you who are Patreon supporters know this already, uh, that over the last several weeks, what I've been doing is giving sort of behind the scenes production notes, uh, scheduling stories, uh, previews of upcoming guests. Uh, Historically, I've been fairly private uh, with uh, what my upcoming episodes will be. I've always liked sort of the element of surprise each Sunday morning when the episode arrives that all of you will be like, oh, wow, look, he talked to so-and-so. This will be a great show. Uh, but uh, I've decided that on Patreon to give those folks a preview and an update. So that's a, my sort of uh, segue to say that this week's episode uh, had a little story in it, and I explained it in a recent uh, blog post on Patreon. So if you are a supporter, you already know this, but I'll fill everyone else in now. Uh, my guests this week are Amy Westervelt and Julia Ritchie from a show called Range. Uh, this is a spectacular show, one that I, I do believe is uh, underexposed at this time, and I'm very happy Uh, to help shine a light on the work that these ladies are doing because it is excellent. They are great people, and I'm really excited for uh, each of you to learn more about the show. But what you'll hear in our conversation is several references, uh, first right off the bat, where I say episode 92, because this was originally supposed to be episode 91. Um, We sat down, we recorded it, and we had a little technical issue uh, that was a little tough to solve in the editing process, and Amy and Julia were so kind, um, actually, to suggest, hey, do you want to do it again, Uh, to make sure that we got great audio, Uh, and we did, and so we had a second conversation, and that's the first time that's ever happened on the show, and it was so kind and cool of them to take more time uh, out of their schedules to talk to me again to make sure that we brought each of you uh, the best possible listening experience. So you'll hear Amy, Julie, and I reference that, uh, you know, our previous conversation and, you know, like we said before, those type of things. So that's sort of the backstory behind it. And uh, But either way, it's a great conversation and it came out uh, just as good, if not better, uh, than our first attempt. Um, so if you want those kind of behind the scenes stories, that, that information that you can't get anywhere else, because I don't share that on Twitter or Facebook or the website, anywhere, only to Patreon supporters. So if you're interested in in those kind of, um, I don't know, previews, behind the scenes stories, those type of things, um, check out Patreon. A buck a month is all that that I really ask. And and if each and every one of you did that, or even half of you did that, it would absolutely... uh, It'll change my life, I mean, to be to be frank, and, and I would greatly appreciate it. So um, that's it for this uh, little intro here. Hope you guys enjoyed. Now, let's get to the conversation with uh, Amy and Julia from Range. Hello, folks. Welcome back to the Podcast Digest. As I mentioned up front, my guests this week for episode 92 are Amy Westervelt and Julia Ritchie from Range. And I'm super excited to talk about them. Uh, They are winding up their first season, and uh, I have plowed through every episode and am a huge fan. So, Amy and Julia, welcome to the Podcast Digest. Thank you. Thanks for having us. We are the only guests to have the distinction of being 91 and 92. (laughs) (laughs) It's funny that you mentioned that because uh, my 
my notes <laughs> had 91. <laughs> so I'm actually changing them down to 92. And, and you guys know why I explained up front. We tried this once. Due to technical issues beyond anyone's control, uh, we decided to give this a go again. And I, I really appreciate it. So We're real um, pros. I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so before we jump into the show, I would like everyone listening who hasn't heard of Range or hasn't heard of either of you, if you guys would just take just a couple of minutes, if you would, and tell folks a little bit about yourselves, your background, kind of your pream- preamble before Range. Uh, who wants to go first? Do you want me to? Yeah. Okay. Um, this is Amy. And I'm the older one. <laughs> no, you're the low talker one. <laughs> she has a reputation. Old lady low talker is what they call me. Um, and I um, started out in print and then came, um, I was in print for 15 years, um, both freelance and staff, and then have always been an NPR listener and was, was always really wanting to learn how to do audio. And so I called up my local member station and, and asked them if there was something I could do. Um, and they said, sure, come on in and talk to us. And that eventually turned into a part-time uh, reporter position. And that's how I met Julia. Um, and we just kind of started talking about podcasts on day one. So it was kind of kind of un- inevitable that we'd, we'd end up starting something. And this is Julia. I'm the uh, about 30-year-old, uh, so not quite young. The youngin. The youngin. Um, <laughs> I had been in radio, you know, like AM station, interned in high school um, at my local AM station. And then in high school, I did college radio, and I led our, like, newscast in college. And then from there, I went to D.C., And did Voice of America, which is an international broadcasting company. Um, And then I went overseas. So I've always I've just been bouncing around uh, the East Coast for a while in media. I did a little bit of print um, in Savannah, Georgia. And then, yeah, I'd always wanted to, you know, go out west. I'd never been west of the Mississippi. And so last summer I kind of got in my car with my dog. John Steinbeck style. And I drove (laughs) out to Reno where I had a couple of friends and um, I saw that they had a job opening in radio and it'd been a few years since I'd worked in radio. So I I was like, now's the time get back into radio. And um, especially because I listened to tons of podcasts on my road trip on the way out. I think I was also just really inspired (laughs) um, just hearing all the, this really amazing audio storytelling um, on my drive. So I was like, I want to do that which is how I make most of my career choices. (laughs) (laughs) That seems cool. (laughs) That seems like a good approach for both career choices and like dinner choices, like walking to a restaurant, like I want to eat that. And then you eat that. It's a good way to make all your decisions, basically, Mm -hmm. I would say. (laughs) So you guys both end up working at Reno Public Radio. Uh, We should mention that's where you guys are both currently at. Mm -hmm. Um, And you said said you started talking about podcasts. Um, You know, I talk about podcasts with a couple of people. I've not started one with anyone else. Uh, I was the only one who uh, was dumb enough to take this on. Uh, So tell folks a little bit about those early conversations, kind of what was the idea process like uh, for both of you and sort of uh, how did those conversations conversations evolve into range (laughs) (laughs) um i so i think uh, amy had started working here not long after i started and we immediately bonded over our podcast lists or like have you listened to this she was like hey have you listened to crybabies and i was like no and then i started listening to it and then i was like hey have you listened to this and you're like no and so she started listening to gastropod and Mm -hmm. um so we were like swapping our favorites and then we just naturally started talking about what we would do if we had a podcast um and so it turned into like late night texting sessions we were like almost like dating (laughs) 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 where we would like bounce uh names back and forth to each other and the first time we did this I pulled out my phone and I I pulled up the original list of names that we had uh, picked out for there were some real gems in there some real like (laughs) I think Nevada Fornia was my favorite (laughs) Um, and then there was like Frontier which is very Star Trek and um, but we knew we wanted it to be Western themed so that we had like Prospector the Gambler sounds like Paul Newman driven (laughs) like films from the 1950s basically um, yeah, and it just it, it came. It started with like, hey, what we want to do a show about Western issues and West, Western themes, thing, things that we don't hear on podcasts right now. Um, and then it turned into like, what would we call it, and what would our tagline be, and what would our format be? And so it just kept going. And then every time we figured the what the tagline would be, and we figured out what the format would be, and then we're like, okay, what's our first episode going to be? And then mm-hmm. it just it was natural. 
Yeah. Yeah. And we did um, – we did talk about wanting to do, um, I don't know, something that was about the West, but that everyone would enjoy. So, um, you know, we, we have this conversation a lot with people about the podcast that, you know, OK, yes, we've like put our stake in the ground and said, like, we're in the West. But um, but I, I, you know, I think we're pretty careful to choose stories that really appeal to anyone, you know, um, and. Uh, like I've talked to a few people who initially were like, oh, that's not for me because I live in New York or whatever. And then they eventually listen to it and they're like, oh, this is these are just really interesting stories. So our our whole thing is to sort of encapsulate the I don't know, like the the insult of the West. <laughs> yeah, we, we talk a lot about the um, the individualism in yeah. The individualism and the um, self determination, mm-hmm. uh, com- resilience, resilience um, people who just want to do something on their own or start over in some way, or want to hide out in the West. There's yeah. a lot of those people too. Yeah, those but are good stories, exactly. <laughs> uh, and and finding those those people and really you know finding out what makes them tick. I think the people and the issues are sort of happened to be there but as you guys mentioned Amy I think you were just saying that you know the the appeal is much broader the the stories oftentimes uh could be from anywhere and 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 folks listening I want to make sure that you guys don't have that same reaction that Amy was just describing as somebody who lived in New York that no matter where you are I don't care if you're in even in the U.S. or not uh, I I can fully vouch for just about every episode of the range uh has a much much broader appeal uh than the locality this is just the theater for the storytelling I would think and uh it's um it, it, it there's so many great episodes and we're going to dig into some of those in detail in just a second but a, a couple more admin style uh topics <laughs> i wanted to cover uh and 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 i want to talk about this because uh we talked about it previously and and i love it because i'm still wildly amused by it still uh as i was the first time looking at the website and that was this super unique artwork and the story about how uh you guys came upon it because i think it's uh it's something that adds to the experience of the show and and, and my for one don't have any artwork and in, in, in yours is uh, stupendous. Can uh, one of you sort of tell a story about the artwork that Range uses? Yeah, yeah. So um, so I'll, fir- I'll start by bragging on the fact that I designed our logo. We actually hired a designer. <laughs> we probably shouldn't. Probably don't shouldn't, say his name. Don't say that. Don't no. say that. We hired a designer to work on logos for us and we didn't really like anything that, that um, he came up with and so I was like, you know, fuck it. I've got, sorry, can I curse on your podcast, Dan? Sure. Um, <laughs> I've got, I've got Adobe tools. I can do this. So um, I know Microsoft I Paint. Don't, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a good clip artist. Um, so... <laughs> So I had a Lisa Frank folder growing up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, and then I have a, a good friend whose boyfriend is an illustrator and he was trying to build his portfolio. And so she kind of offered like, hey, you know, Jim can do illustrations for you. And, and at first I was kind of like, um, OK, free illustrations. Like, what are those going to be? <laughs> Naked fairies. Naked fairies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then she sent me. She's like, well, you know, send me, you know, some of the ideas that you're talking about. And so I did. And she's she had him just do a few rough sketches and they were amazing like i mean he sent i don't know three or four just right off the bat that were fantastic and are still up on our website um so yeah like just i don't know the colors and the the style of drawing and everything he managed to really kind of capture this western thing but still very very modern and i don't know that was, i think they're cool yeah <laughs> and i think that was when we were in our brainstorming phase we were yeah. like the two things we like most in our favorite podcasts are really good art and really good music yeah uh criminal being like the the apex of that right is they have amazing artwork to go with each episode as well as this really chilling um unique score for each episode of criminal so we wanted to create that thematic um, sort of Western feel through music and art. And I think we nailed it. (laughs) We also have really good music by uh, another one of Amy's friends, David Whited, who has been more than generous with his time in, in composing. Like we were like, Hey, we need more happy music. You're sending us too many, like, you know, melancholy themes and he'll like plunk out six more tracks to us. Yeah. He's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to have talented friends, kids, <laughs> kids out there listening. <laughs> friends in high places. Yeah. Uh, on the music front, we were going to talk about that, the uh, use of music. And, and another question just sort of popped into my head. In 
prior to range, uh, in your experience uh, with public radio, with radio in general, had either of you sort of had the experience of sort of mixing musical elements into the story? Or was that somebody else's job description? Or was that something you guys are just now dipping into with range? I think Julia had had, you'd had experience doing a, that. A little bit. Um, I wanted to do a lot more of it uh, where I would be, com- you know, making stories and then I would find ways to incorporate musical elements in it, but never as intense as we do in range. And and I would say across the board in a lot of the storytelling podcasts now, which rely heavily on music to carry stories Mm-hmm. So I think it was just, you know, I, I like I was like, I think I can do this. And then we've been, I think, slowly experimenting with trying to do more and more of it, too. It's mm-hmm. like, like, hey, throw a music bed in there. Yeah. <laughs> and it's cool because it's been influencing, I think, both of us um, at, at our, you know, our day jobs, too. Um, you know, we've been throwing more music into news features and things, I did too. a, I put down a, a plinky uh, turn-of-the-century ragtime song in a story about a, a new bridge that was opening in Reno, Nevada, and it was, the, like, the same um, plinky music that we used in the trailer of our podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I just loved it so much, and, it, you know, you think of old-timiness, and I was like, well, I'm talking about an old-timey bridge that they're redoing, so this makes sense. So it's kind of been fun to see like how I can uh, cross pollinate my ideas <laughs> from the podcast to my real world job. That seems to be a very common theme. When I was speaking a few weeks ago to Jonathan Mitchell from The Truth and Radiotopia, he talked a lot about sort of his uh, college days where he did a lot of sort of audio narrative storytelling. And then his first job out of school was sort of more archival transcription of business interviews and conferences but because of his background he started to throw in you know transitional music elements and and apparently the company loved him obviously Mm -hmm. uh so that's something that that you guys are seeing more and more of where you're you're starting to bring obviously elements from the day job are showing up in range but but you're starting to see more of going the other direction as well Mm -hmm. yeah definitely hopefully more (laughs) the other is more fun (laughs) yeah so a quick aside before we jump into some of the episodes that dichotomy we should cover between public radio and uh, podcasts as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Obviously, the two of you are are huge fans and proponents of both. Right? Yeah. Um, Our but, boss was just in the other room, and we were both like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> <laughs> but but as as is widely known by a lot of people listening, and and you two, of course, uh, that's not always the case. Some stations feel different about it. Some people who've been in public radio a long time may look at podcasts a little bit differently. I would sort of like each of you kind of take just a moment and tell us your thoughts on. Uh, do you feel that they can be compliments to each other or do they sort of stand in opposition? What are the thoughts of being, you know, with two feet firmly in both medium? I, I would say that eventually I hope that podcasting can complement all public media stations regardless of their size, because I think um, having an outlet for a, not only just um, compelling content, but also additional content. We we spend so much time out in the field recording for these tiny little news breaks throughout the day at our station here in Reno. And we end up with so much extra material that uh, with the right creative, um, you know, outlet and structure can be turned into a a really good uh, podcast, which is kind of what we did is we're like, hey, we're always out in the field getting all this audio. Let's turn this um, into something magical. I think what we ran into here and um, and Amy, you can, you know, tell me. (laughs) I don't know, add to it Mm -hmm. is uh, that the people here aren't as familiar with podcasting. Right. So like there are people that are still in the radio world that don't haven't fully immersed themselves in podcasting and um, what what podcasting can do. So I think it was a tougher sell here for us because I know other stations have launched podcasts on the side because um, when you have a small station with limited resources, it's it's hard to sell that as something as like, hey, this is actually going to add value to your station as opposed to, hey, this is going to take away from your time and strap you um, of even more resources than you already have. So, mm-hmm. you know, we, we tried to sell it um, as, you know, this is brand value. This is going to build, um, you know, more like we're going to grow your listenership beyond Reno, that kind of thing. Um, but at the end of the day, it was like, oh, well, we'll talk about it later. And we we're like, eh, we'll just go ahead and do it because we have <laughs> we want to do it. You know, we had yeah. we had the, the goal in mind to do it. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And I would just add that um, I, I do think they totally complement each other. And right now I think that um, 
the audiences have been kind of separate, but I do I, I do feel like they're starting to to cross over a little bit in both directions. Like that, there are. I mean, I think it's it's obvious that people who are already listening to public radio all the time will be more interested in like long form audio podcasts, you know. But also, you know, um, I think you mentioned before, Dan, that like you weren't a big public radio listener and you kind of got into it through podcasts, and I think that's starting to happen too. So I would I would love to think that you know. I don't know that that they'll benefit each other and complement each other and not be in opposition. I know, I, like, yeah. I feel like I see a few of these like articles all the time right now about you know like podcasting versus public radio. Yeah, I and hate I just those. Think it's dumb. Me I think too. that like you know it's it's kind of all the same medium and um, yeah, yeah. It, it, to me, like kind of going off of that is that. You know, if the concern was, oh, if you're a reporter and you're doing, a, you know, a straight newscast, then how are you going to be perceived when you're doing a podcast and you're cracking jokes about, you know, whatever farts and things like that. marijuana? <laughs> yeah, you're talking about marijuana. On the, on the I, I don't radio. think you're helping here. Like, how will you be perceived? <laughs> and for me, it's always like, well, I'm one and the same, right? Is I, I, I'm basically the same person across platforms. Yeah. I may be a little bit more open and candid and on the podcast, uh, but hopefully if you listen to the podcast and had never heard my reporting before, you actually might want to start listening to my reporting. Yeah. Uh, which wouldn't have any fart jokes in it. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. Too bad. <laughs> to draw a entertainment industry uh, comparison, it seems to me what you're saying is that it's not so much about uh, movie theaters versus Netflix, but it's more like a movie production studio, movie studio releasing things to both theaters and DVD. Yeah, that exactly. they're more complementary than they are standing at odds. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's that digital first approach that uh, is very popular these days. Is mm -hmm. you know push it to digital. Uh, and see how far it goes, you know? What's what's your ripple effect? Mm -hmm. Well, and I think the one thing that um, podcasts has that Netflix also has, which is the concept of on-demand, right? No matter right. the time of day, no matter where I am, no matter what I'm doing, if I want something, I can go get it, hit the button, and l listen to it then, or watch and it then in the case of Netflix. And you can it, too. Another, exactly. Yeah. And, and it almost seems like public radio super advocates, if you will, have got to be aware of what Netflix is doing on, you know, the television movie side and realize this is a successful model and very similar to podcasts. And mm -hmm. I think there's there's something to be said for that. Now, podcasts as a medium itself have all kinds of other questions like monetization, da 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 but just from medium versus medium, I agree. I would love to see them be much more complimentary um, than they, they've stood so far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Preach. So let's jump into some of this podcasting stuff, especially some of the episodes of Range. Uh, we, we, we got into some of these last time. There's so many great stories with some of these episodes. And I think I'll open the same way uh, we, we, we've talked about previously, which is uh, we are about, uh, have we just wrapped season one? At the times folks yes. are hearing this, yes, have we, have, just we have officially wrapped season one. <laughs> they have heard the season finale uh, for season one, and folks, go through binge this whole thing. That uh, between regular episodes and bonus episodes, which we'll talk about here in just a minute, it won't take you long. You can definitely plow through this whole thing uh, in just a few hours, and it will be worth your time. I promise you. But uh, both Amy and like Julia, a package if you of could, Oreos. <laughs> yes, tell us a little bit about sort of your favorite episodes, maybe, or one that stands out in your mind, and and, and sort of share sort of that behind the scenes story on kind of how that episode came together um right now well i i think i actually i have a tie for my favorite um <laughs> between pros to bros which is about extreme athletes transitioning into kind of like normal life after they've been like the best in the world at something which was really um was going to be a bonus episode but then i i met so many people and they were so um open with their feelings about it that it turned into a, a longer episode um and I like that one just because I feel like people just like got really deep really fast when they were talking about it. And I was like, wow, OK. Um, and then I also really like our our um, our last episode, which is about Tesla fanboys um, and like how that company has managed to create groupies for itself. And, and, you know, why, like what it is about that brand that people just, you know, are really um, fanatical about. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Hand, yeah, yeah, those are both really good ones. My my hands down favorite is Showgirls because mm -hmm. 
Uh, it's, I think, our highest production quality um, that we pulled off this season as far as finding archi- archival tape, um, original music. Then we added in some of our original music. And then we had this really compelling interview with this uh, woman who um, – uh, or we should have described the episodes when we said, them. but yeah, yeah. So, Showgirls is about this uh, woman who um, has one of the largest private collections of showgirl costumes in the United States, and she happens to live in Reno, which is so convenient for us because yeah. we don't get to, out to travel a lot. Um, and she used to be a showgirl in this old um, sort of like Vegas spinoff MGM show called Hello Hollywood Hello. And so we sort of um, take her story and illuminate what these shows used to bring to um, desert towns like Reno and Vegas in the 60s and 70s uh, and how this economy of showgirls is actually like going away pretty fast. Um, the last really big showgirl epic closed in February. And so we were able to tie all of that in through this one woman's story. And um, I, th- I think at the beginning of the episode, I talk about how much I love musicals. <laughs> and um, so it was sort of a, a great way for me to sort of uh, do a story about something that I, am, I already really like, which is when you do your best stories, I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And Julia, share the story you relayed about how the Showgirls episode wasn't necessarily going to be as sort of wide ranging and large a scope originally. Uh, but as you kind of went through the process, it, it you realized that you could do so much more with it. Right. I think we had uh, a script written and um, we recorded it. And then as I started to piece it together, I kept coming across these uh, these different like nuggets of sound. So when I went to interview her, I noticed she had all these old VHS tapes of her um, of her performance in the show. And then some of them had made their way onto YouTube. So I was like, oh, we can actually write this in um, and we can actually bring in this music here. Um, And then I found uh, like an old advertisement for the MGM Grand Casino, which is now um, the Grand Sierra Hotel in Midtown um, Reno. And I was able to kind of incorporate that. And so we kind of went back and we might have had to re-record even a little bit. I think we did. Yeah, Yeah. because Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I found this other thing and I think we can make it even better and more sound rich. Right. Which is the was just the goal, I think, in most um, storytelling podcasts. Yeah, and that Showgirls episode was sort of that that mostly produced episode, if you will, and I mean that in all the best possible ways, folks. So uh, definitely a great starting point. But there are so many. Amy, you were telling us uh, last time, I keep referencing it, mm-hmm. uh, about how the idea was a certain number of episodes, and as you started to kind of put things together, you realized that, hey, there's an opportunity here for some bonus things. So as folks go through the back catalog, they're going to find bonus episodes too, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we because we're um, we're both reporting stories all the time and I don't know, just coming across things. Um, we also get were, excited. I mean, very excited easily. Yeah. We're, we're, we're excitable. E- yes. Um, <laughs> we, um, uh, there were just a few um, times where we came across, you know, someone that was just really interesting and we thought, oh, this would be a good extra episode or. We did an inter- interview for something else and thought, oh, like this part of this interview could be really good for for a bonus. So like um, I uh, I know this comedian, uh, W. Kamau Bell um, from college, and he is has become kind of well known. I feel like he's actually like been interviewed on a zillion podcasts <laughs> lately. <laughs> but um, but anyway, he I knew had moved to New York and done all this stuff and gotten in his own TV show and had all of this success and then decided to move back to the West. And uh, we had talked, Julie and I, about doing an episode about people who had moved West and why and what their reasons were. And so I thought, oh, good, I'll talk to Kamau. And then I happened to call him the day after his birthday, which um, was uh, the one year commemoration of not just his birthday, but also this like ridiculous incident that happened in Berkeley that had spawned all this controversy about him getting kicked out of a restaurant. Um, a waiter thought that he was panhandling and it kicked off all these discussions about race in Berkeley. And so anyway, he talked about that for, you know, like 20 minutes of our of our call. And I thought, well, this would be a really cool bonus episode because – you know, the West is often associated with like progressive politics and people being really open. And of all places, Berkeley in particular <laughs> is really associated with that. Um, but yet here we go. There was this super like racist incident that happened and that people were just really uptight about talking about. So um, so we wanted to do something looking at uh, just, I don't know, Western progressives and how they tackle that issue. And I don't know. I think it came off 
and came I, off pretty well. And the bonus episodes function as us sort of fleshing out what this idea is. So yeah. we were like, oh, I don't know if that's a full episode, but why don't we try it as a bonus episode? You know, I, I went yeah. to Elko, Nevada for this cowboy poetry gathering, which is an, an incredible um, culturally rich festival that celebrates the old um, um, like tradition of cowboy poetry and literally having these old men with these crazy mustaches reading like these like heart wrenching <laughs> poems. I was like, this is great sound, but maybe not a full range episode or we don't have time to do or we want to get it out pretty fast because we didn't want it to air too long after the festival. Um, so, you know, we're always like, hey, let's throw it. Let's throw it out there because we want to give people a taste of the West mm-hmm. in between our more, you know, highly produced, fleshed out ideas while we're still sort of exploring our concept and finding out, you know, what, what does it mean to, to, to be the new West, to be in the new West and to live here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you'll notice that actually the bonus episodes are pretty much the same length. I know they always end up being, we're always like, shit, this is so much more work like than we thought it was going to be because we get excited and we just eventually bonuses will just be, you know, additional episodes. Right. I think that, that, like we said, we wanted to originally be a biweekly podcast coming out every two weeks. So sometimes the bonus episodes function as shit. We need to buy more time before we get that next episode out that we had, uh, we had scheduled. So let's, let's throw this out there. Yeah. (laughs) Well, and that's, what's interesting about range so far. And only in about the last two months have I, you know, really dug in. And like I said, I went all the way back to the beginning and, and two things, to speak to both those bonus uh, episodes that 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 you explained about, one was when I saw W. Kamau Bell in the title, I was like, "Oh, I've been seeing the CNN promo for weeks now. Mm-hmm. I'm going to listen to that one." And the other one was, "I never even heard of cowboy poetry. <laughs> <So it's> like, <laughs> what is that? Now you have. So, yeah, this this type is like something I've been hearing constantly about as I'm watching the unending political coverage, uh, and then something I've never heard about, and that." kind of is sort of like what range is so far right, right? you've got yeah. tesla That's on we, one we, end we, of the spectrum we were talking about this like midway through our first yeah. season is like i'm kind of old west i kind of like the old west stuff coming from the south i think it, it's a natural fit for me yeah and amy's like the new west california yeah like, <laughs> it's true well, less you're, gritty you're, cov- <laughs> you're covering like the tesla gigafactory on one end and yeah. brothels on the other end of right. the spectrum and everything in between yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that's what's cool. I mean, that means, you know, when a new episode of Range arrives, it's like, which end of the spectrum are we existing on here? Do we have a CNN celebrity? Do we have a, you know, super electric car company? Or do we have, you know, cowboy uh, billionaires, <laughs> uh, brothel owners and <laughs> cowboy poetry? Yeah. Uh, one of the things I wanted to dive into as well, and we've uh, uh, mentioned this last time, and, and I want to make sure I get this out here because I think this is a huge differentiator uh, between range and a lot of the other sort of local theater, if you will. I like that term now. I'm going to start using it. Local theater and, and, and um, storytelling shows is that there is a huge heaping uh, of both of your personalities uh, integrated into range through the dialogue, through the scripts, through what comes off sounding very often is just banner back and forth. I, I sort of wanted to talk about that and, and ask you, was this sort of a uh, predetermined decision or did this kind of happen naturally and you left it? What's sort of the thought process behind bringing so much personality into the shows? We just didn't want to sound so scripted. Yeah. Yeah. And part of uh, the way we, we start every episode is we just start recording for about five minutes yeah. and we just riff and we talk about anything, you know, what's going on with your baby or what's going on with this. And, yeah. and we never, or, you know, we'll be talking about the episode and, you know, how we want certain things to sound. And obviously it, it can get pretty funny pretty fast too that way. But I think it's about letting down our guard because we're not strictly reporting right we're actually like making a podcast so i think our goal is to like not make people bored you know yeah yeah Yeah. and i think i don't know i just i i think you get tired of um of having to like pretend to be a certain way um doing every other kind of reporting Mm -hmm. and it's nice to just be yourself and you know um and react to the story that you're telling you know like if something is sad to say like jesus that's really depressing or like, yeah or if you're uh shopping you know for recreational weed in oregon with your ex-boyfriend <laughs> yeah. you might as well just say it because you know you're setting up a scene and this is the way it is you know this is how yes. this is how i happen to be in bend oregon yeah. and then you know later you'll your friend might come up and be like did you really say that on your podcast like why did you do that <laughs> and i was like no filter <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag no filter. 
But I think it's so important, and I think it's one of the differentiators that makes range sort of stand out from some of those other shows and uh, folks listening what you'll find is that as you go on you'll pick up uh, bits and bobs and little uh, nuances of information from both julia and amy that that kind of allow you to sort of follow not just the stories but them as well and i think that is a sort of draw uh to a lot of the now subscribers hopefully who are kind of following this story and uh you know recent congratulations to you amy as well mom Thank you. she Thank started you. she started the podcast pregnant and we make mention yes. of that and then like a couple episodes later it's like hey didn't you just have a baby and then like a <laughs> few episodes late, later you can actually hear the baby yes in, uh, i think it was the marijuana episode yeah because stoner uh, baby yeah because stoner <laughs> her baby because she has them strapped to her whenever we're recording so we're like well we kind of have to bring you know the fact that like this is this is who we are and this is how real life man it's a scrappy operation that we're running (laughs) I, i can't wait till you know 16 years from now or so when amy says to her son hey you made a debut on air in a podcast it was during a marijuana episode listen I'm a cool mom. It's true, it's true. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be hard to like. Hi- yeah, I guess that's true. It's gonna be hard, hard to pretend that I'm really straight. Like, <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> I imagine by the point he's 16, it's gonna be legal everywhere, and nobody It'll will care. It'll be anymore, obvious. So. Yeah. yeah, it won't even matter. So it won't be a big deal. Yeah. In fact, your explanation is gonna be: hey, uh, at one time, this wasn't even legal somewhere. Yeah. Like, really. True. <laughs> <laughs> then he'll be doing a podcast on the new new west you know all the states have legalized marijuana not just like a handful yeah 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 the, they're gonna be uh tesla's gonna be building flying cars you that know are like and, hyperloopers uh, you know, that run on hemp <laughs> yeah exactly the hyperloop will be built by that point the hemp yeah. the hemper loop mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that, that that's a few of those episodes and, and, and a little bit on that story as well. Uh, let's jump into uh, something else as well, which is sort of the idea of uh, we're wrapping up season one. Uh, folks should be subscribing now and checking out the back catalog Do because it. there's more to come, right? Yes. Season always, two. Yeah. Well, season two will be coming in fall, maybe fall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And but um, we'll be dropping little nuggets here and there. Yeah. I think we'll definitely have a few um, bonus episodes like throughout the summer and then season two in the fall for sure. One thing I just said dropping little nuggets because (laughs) as I said in our original interview, I try to bring in Western themes in everything I say. (laughs) So we're always prospecting out there for like little gold nuggets. and uh, and, uh, You just stole it from me. I was about to say subscribe for dropping nuggets. (laughs) Yeah, subscribe subscribe for them gold nuggets. Yeah, no, I think uh, we want to come up with like a – we've already started talking about uh, potential episodes for season two and what those would look like um, and – uh, how many we'd, we would be producing. Um, and I think our goal this time around, because we've learned a lot, right, is um, that we would have a lot more in the can ready to go. So that way we'll get, yes. get a little bit further ahead and not fall behind, right? I think and that's stay on schedule. The struggle is real, though. I'm sure like a lot of podcasters that are listening right now like feel the pain, you know, when you fall behind your schedule and you're like, no. Yeah. So some of the cans, one lesson. Looking back at season one now, generally talk about it. I'm assuming something you're very proud of. Yeah, I was saying, you know, the other day, like I, I sometimes I'll go out in the community and I'll introduce myself as, you know, Julia Ritchie with Reno Public Radio. And um, then I'll get into conversation and say, oh, yeah, I've started my own podcast. And they ask me what it's called. And I say range. And they go, I've heard of it. And I don't even know who they are and I don't know how they came across our podcast because we've done it all through word of mouth and, you know, very limited marketing, um, you know, all on our own dime. So it's been that's like really rewarding to like actually be out um, where we live and have people that are really interested in podcasting in our community. Um, and I, I, so I, I'm really into that aspect of it, that the fact that like you don't have to live in L.A. or New York to launch something that you can you can think of as successful because people are listening to it and um, it's and it's involving stories that matter to them. Yeah, I mean, we've even gotten a lot of people contacting us through our web form, you know, and you know, like our, our awesome <laughs> email address, our our howdy at range podcast dot org dot org dot org, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then you know, people have left really nice reviews in the iTunes store to. Um, Many of which are people that we don't actually know. Yeah, you know, and <laughs> we are not related to, not related to, or mm-hmm. marrying, or having sex with. Or yeah, <laughs> yeah. totally. <laughs> um, so it's nice. It's nice to to put something out there and have people actually listen. We've had pretty good growth. You know, we're 
I think it's it's a little over a thousand downloads per episode right now. So, you know, it's not like breaking the bank or anything. But right. it's still pretty good for just kind of putting it out there and hoping for the best, and which is, because, is more or less our marketing strategy. Right. And because we partnered with High Country News, um, they, yes. they've been a great partner. And whenever they post one of our episodes, like our listeners like shoot up. And um, mm-hmm. they're such a good compliment to what we're doing because they're – their whole like ethos is all about like what's it like to live in the West now, um, and they focus a lot on environmental issues, but they're also interested in just culture, mm-hmm. um, and so I think we're a really good fit f- for them, and, and they've helped us expand our reach a little bit more. So yeah, I think you know we're not, we're not going to like you know compare ourselves to you know Radiotopia levels here or anything <laughs> like that, but uh, we're really proud of what we've done just by ourselves, you know. Yeah. Gold I don't know stars. if anyone Gold can nuggets. or should <laughs> compare themselves to Radiotopia levels at this point. You know, yeah. But they're doing something in a completely different stratosphere. But uh, we talked about last time at the time of our last conversation, we were somewhere in the late 20s uh, in terms of numbers of reviews. And yeah, folks, six, I've been talking about this. Uh, this yeah. is episode 92. I've been talking about this for almost all 92 episodes. And I'm telling you. What you're going to do is you're going to swipe over, you're going to subscribe to Range, and you're going to blow through that back catalog like I did and like you will love. And then you're going to go into iTunes and leave a review. All right? It's Mm -hmm. going to take you 30 seconds, and it's going to mean so much to these ladies and what they're doing. And it is uh, worth your time. And and they are doing great work, and it's just a tragedy. I said it before. I'll stick with it. It is a tragedy uh, that that you two are uh, only sitting at that number of reviews. And downloads, they'll come. But yeah. but reviews as, need to need to get as bumped, I folks. often get say on. during our um, as I say during our pledge drives for public radio, you should swipe right for range. <laughs> there <you> go. <laughs> Little Tinder Hashtag humor Tinder for those millennials out there. <laughs> yes, got to appeal to the millennials. What up, millennials? You, you're talking showgirls and marijuana here in Tesla. <laughs> so come on. <laughs> Um, so, uh, any uh, any major changes maybe for season two? Anything that that you have thought maybe you guys should do differently? Anything you? We talked a little bit about the production values on Showgirls. Are we kind of shooting for that level some more? Yeah. Or yeah. We talked a little bit about frequency. Talk about maybe some of the things folks can expect different wise. Uh, more um, more sound, I'd say. Mm-hmm. More music, um, and also leaning more on that non narrative structure. Uh, we talked a little bit about our favorite podcast, and Love and Radio was one that came up last time where uh, they just do a really good job of not being in the story as much and I think that's a definite goal for us because eventually we would like to have freelancers contributing um, from different parts of the West Utah, Colorado, uh, Wyoming what up? Arizona, Oregon you know that (laughs) um, because we we want to really actually talk about more than just Nevada and California we want to get beyond um, those borders so yeah I think um, pushing ourselves uh, creatively to try and bring new types of episodes. Um, and that's sort of, I think we started experimenting with that a little in our bonus episodes um, with pulling out a little bit. Um, yeah. Yeah. And more like, I don't know, more found sound and more interesting sounds in general. And I think, you know, keeping to a schedule for sure. I <laughs> know that sounds really boring. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, like we definitely want to, um, you know, get people in the habit of listening every other week when we have a new one. Um, although, I mean, no, I definitely want to keep to a schedule. But I am, I will say that, like, myself, the way I listen to podcasts is, like, binge listening, right. basically. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. Well, that's what I think that's exciting is, is now that we've wrapped up season one is um, we keep getting emails. Like we said, uh, people are pitching us stories all the time. Yeah, and which we're is like, cool. Yeah, it is really cool. So mm-hmm. I, it'll be interesting to see. Um, as we do a little like more interviews like this too, like people who come to our show late who like weren't on the ground level when we, we launched and they'll binge our first season and think like, oh, when's season two already? Yeah. Not realizing like what a long slog it was <laughs> getting through <laughs> season one. Yeah. I have a feeling that's going to be happening all throughout the summer. I can imagine <laughs> that that folks will be streaming in over, uh, you know, the next few months awaiting season two. And I, I hope that, you know, <laughs> while you are about to launch season two, you have so, so many emails and so many uh, people banging on the door that, uh, you know, there won't be any pressure at all. 
No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> There's no shortage of stories, at least that. That yeah, not not in the West. We've already like talked about. I'm, I'm gonna. I just got my ticket to Burning Man, by the way. Nice. I'm really excited about that. So, <laughs> so if anyone wants to see Julia naked, yeah, get to Burning. You Man. don't really have to wait <laughs> for Burning Man. <laughs> just follow me on Skype. <laughs> Oh, Swipe you've right done it for now. Julia. <laughs> <laughs> you've done it now. We brought up podcasts, right? Podcasts that we mentioned a little bit earlier. Uh, a, a couple that you were listening to when Range got born, if you will. Yeah. Uh, and you brought it up as well. And this is the Podcast Digest. And this wouldn't be my show if I didn't talk uh, about a lot of the podcasts I love and give both of you as avid podcast listeners an opportunity to tell us about some of your favorite shows. Maybe some that influenced you uh, to start Range or some elements that you try to borrow from. What are some of the the favorite podcasts that, that you guys turn to um I, I i have such a long list right now but the the ones i'm listening to most at the moment are the longest shortest time which i was i was telling you before i really liked your interview with um with hillary frank she was super interesting um in that episode um but i like it and you know yes i'm a mom but i do feel like it's um it is interesting for non-parents too um the long form podcast i listen to a lot because i'm I'm a writer nerd Mm -hmm. (laughs) um and i love toot up queens right now oh man so So funny good i love the air horn in that (laughs) yeah maybe we'll have more air horn in our next season (laughs) that's that's obviously Um, the sister podcast to range right (laughs) <laughs> yeah, totally. It couldn't be more different, but I love it. Um, and then I think we talked before about Note to Self, that that was one that um, yeah. that we, you know, listened to a lot as we were starting range. And we really like how um, she does such a great job of mixing just what's going on in her life and her personal reactions to different technological things and then what's happening with the technology. And how she's been able to grow that show to become her own because she started as New Tech City and then she rebranded and it didn't really affect you know her listenership at all it actually it made it, it made it better so like i think that's mm-hmm. like oh we can actually change things on range and actually make it better and i think that's yeah. like a huge goal for us and then i mentioned gastropod because I like these like female led um, kind of shows that allow like two women to like banter off each other. Mm-hmm. Um, Cry Babies being a big oh, one. Yeah. yeah, I love Cry Babies. Um, mm-hmm. And then I've been listening to Criminal a lot yeah. um, for the stories. Just the stories are in- insane that she gets. Um, and then the other one I, I listen to a lot is um, I'm trying to think Love and Radio. Yeah, for sure. that one. And what was I just? You know, I listen to a lot of economics podcasts because I'm sort of a a nerd. Um, So, like, uh, Marketplace and Planet Money. (laughs) I kind of like Kyra's at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) We got a writing nerd and an economics nerd. Yep. (laughs) And uh, you both started a show that has nothing to do with writing or economics. (laughs) No. That works out well. Well, those are some great shows there. A few former guests as well. And uh, yeah, there's there's so much good stuff out there between a couple of WNYC shows and, and stuff Radiotopia is doing and beyond. Um, there, there's all kinds of great stuff, which which leads me to my next question. Honestly, we touched on it a little bit earlier and, and I don't want I wanted to sort of ask this hypothetically uh, to both of you. Should range continue to grow and over this summer more people come banging on the door and season two goes gangbusters and stuff? Are there any more longer range plans for range? Could you see range becoming a part more formally of either the public radio space or maybe one of these podcast networks like uh, Radiotopia or WNYC or Earwolf or something like that? What, What do you think? That's the dream. Yeah, I mean, either that or we'll just start our own damn podcast network. (laughs) Yeah, we talked about that, actually. (laughs) There you go. Yeah. No, I think there's a lot of room uh, for for growth. I mean, the goal, obviously, is monetization and and trying to get a sponsor to um, to help us, you know, upgrade our our gear and just like give us a travel budget or something you know food budget babysitting baby budget (laughs) stoner baby budget weed budget whatever Um, but yeah like uh, i think that that would be awesome and um we're certainly open to either joining a network or folding it into something um with a public uh radio station if it was a good fit uh so i think that's also what we what we'll be working on over the summer a little bit Mm mm-hmm 
uh, that would be great to see. Anything growth-wise uh, for what the two of you are doing I think would be awesome because I can completely see this. I, when I was speaking with Roman Mars and I also spoke with um, Jacob Lewis from uh, Neighbors, uh, Neighbors was recently added to Nashville Public Radio and, of course, uh, 99% of Visibles all over the place. They talk about sort of They've got their, you know, 17 to 20 minute episode that gets trimmed down to, you know, a four minute segment for public radio. Yeah. Uh, do you see range being trimmable to four minute segments sure. in case it starts getting in that, that yeah, circulation? I think yeah. As, yeah, I think it could easily you could you could get a four minute feature out of there. And we're also super used to doing that. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You take, we take lots of tape and turn it into very little things. Yeah. 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 yeah I think so. If you, if you pay us, we'll do anything. <laughs> Seriously. Pretty much straightforward. We're real Western entrepreneurs here, you know? <laughs> well, that was something we touched on a little bit last time. And, and I think, Julia, you were telling me that when you go out to do some of these recordings, and, and Amy, you probably have the same experience, where it's just recorder on all the time. Yeah. And it's just hours and hours and hours. And mm -hmm. talk a little bit about, because you guys do fit into that sort of, you know, 14 to 19 minute length episodes, if you will. Uh, what is the process like? getting those hours and hours of interviews and recordings down to something so concise painful <laughs> awful <laughs> miserable painful depressing. awful and miserable <laughs> although actually i always build it up in my head as this like horrible task that i have to do and then it's actually really fun <laughs> like, yeah i do like like i like listening once i to get it, into the zone in. and i'm like logging my tape and and then i'm like then we're like going over the script with each other and, mm -hmm. and i think yeah, and that's something we talked about too. Changing is having more of a because we switch off episodes. So this is a fun game that your uh, listeners can play when they go and binge listen is to figure out what's an Amy episode, and what's a Julia episode because we do have stylistic differences. Um, but maybe next season, um, going through tape together and, mm -hmm. and more collaboratively writing a script before we just go to the studio and start recording it. Um, but yeah, I think it, it's about we talk about the story before we go out. And then once we start uh, collecting interviews for it, then we'll come back and be like, hey, I just interviewed this person for this episode or I interviewed this person for that episode. Um, so we're always talking about what we're getting and what we're listening to mm -hmm. um, before we even put a like word on the page. And Amy, I think you said last time that that oftentimes when you're conducting these interviews, a light bulb will go off when you're talking to them. You're like, I'm using that. That's going to be great. I'm, yeah. Or this isn't going to be usable at all or whatever the case may be. And you'll start making mm -hmm. notes, right? Yeah, I do. I, I make notes and I, um, I write down um, timestamps, too. So I know when I'm, you know, when I'm going back through like a two hour tape, I'm not having to listen to the whole two hours again. That's, <laughs> that's very good of you. I don't do that at all. <laughs> well, by, by that point, you definitely know what you've had for breakfast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> About five times over. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hyperloops. It's what's for breakfast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's a new serial name. That's, yeah. that's untapped at this point, for sure. Tesla will probably need to have that trademark by the end of this episode. <laughs> Hyperloopies. Fruit loopy hyperloopies. <laughs> well, what else haven't we covered yet? What else? Amy, Julia, what else have we covered? What else do folks need to know about range if they're uh, considering, if they're not convinced yet to hit the subscribe button? What, what are they in for? Uh, what haven't we told them yet? Well, they can see all those illustrations that you mentioned on our website, and that's rangepodcast.org. Yeah, we also have a presence on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, so people can interact with us, and we will respond to you. So um, we want people to know that we're actually listening, that we're not one of these, like, esoteric podcasts that just, like, drops an episode and then disappears for a year and then, like, doesn't come back and doesn't respond to, like, fan mail or anything. Like, we're we're real humans. Mm -hmm. um, Very real. Too real. Up until a few weeks ago, <laughs> I actually was on Tinder, so you could find me there, although <laughs> I'm, I'm since sworn it off. But I'm saying, like... We're definitely not off the grid like some of the <laughs> yeah. people in our um, in our episodes are. We are yeah. on the grid and we are happy to, um, yeah, to, to like hear what people liked and what people didn't like. Because I'd also like to hear if there were episodes that just didn't gel for um, yeah. our listeners. We'd like to avoid that <laughs> in the future. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, um, yeah, I think that. The other thing, too, is that um, our we, music is dope. So yeah, you should our music is good. Yeah. <laughs> I actually like I like find myself bopping around to it, yeah. um, which is good because <laughs> I have to hear it a lot. Um, the other thing I'll mention is that we actually have a fiscal sponsor, um, which 
I don't know how well you know the nonprofit space, but I feel like that term is super misleading because it just sounds like someone's giving you money and they're not. They're just giving you their like 5013C status so that so that people can make, you know, um, like write offable donations to to us. So we we kind of have this as we're trying to figure out how we create a business model for um, for range, we have this mix of being able to offer advertising space and take donations um, from from anyone who wants to give them. So donate, yeah. donate, give us your money yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or your gold nuggets. We'll t- we we yeah. we accept the gold. Gold is good too. Gold standard is okay. Yeah, for gold range. is okay. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I always provide all the links to the show notes, folks. You guys know that at this point. And Julia, it's too bad you're not on Tinder because I have never in 92 episodes provided a Tinder link a to Tinder anyone link. before. That would have been <laughs> the first. Well, that would be amazing. It would be pretty funny. <laughs> you should get back <laughs> on just for that. No. <laughs> you could be a trendsetter. I'll start doing that with all my <laughs> guests. Are on my dating I'll, I'll just make it a standard question. Are you on I Tinder? Because I could link you, you up in show notes. Do you have a profile you want to link to? I would, pre- I would prefer a donation, quite honestly. <laughs> I'd like to go buy well, some gelato. Actually, I was just reminded of a previous conversation topic. Speaking of the internet and things that uh, there was, uh, you I don't even remember how we even got into this last time, but Julia, you were telling us how you had uh, previous uh, efforts out there online that you have scrubbed so people should not get overly aggressive with Googling you because you have pretty much scrubbed <laughs> yes, the internet early, early of podcast. all these things. Yes. Oh, yeah. I said I was into podcasting before it was cool because I had a, my own iTunes like podcasting channel when I was in college, that's, which was like 06, 07. Um, You're a baby. I was a baby. Yeah. But I, I got rid of that as well as my Zanga live journal and GeoCities page with the like lava lamp gif. Or Jeff, I still that's have a how it came up. This like, wasn't your first kidding. podcast. That's how it came up last time. Yeah. yeah, but I cannot link to that either, folks. So nope. I apologize. So. <laughs> but all the pertinent links will be in the show notes uh, for range and all the social media stuff. And I, I could not recommend it any further, folks. You will definitely enjoy uh, the whole first season catalog, and uh, definitely stay in tune for the uh, the nuggets dropping over the summer. Uh, that sounds like that should be another art piece of art <laughs> for nuggets dropping, dropping nuggets over the summer <laughs> that'll be our spinoff podcast yeah. it's probably one of our original the titles nugget. yeah <laughs> i think we need to nuggets. reach like, out to the artist and say okay here's what i need i need nuggets dropping in summer <laughs> uh but <laughs> i want to thank you both amy westervelt julia ritchie from range thank you both for taking the time to join me thanks dan thank you so much Folks, that'll do it for episode 92 of the Podcast Digest. Come back again next week for another great interview. Until then, my name's Dan Lizette, and I will talk to you next time. Thank you for listening to the Podcast Digest. You can follow the show on Twitter at PodDigest. Like the show on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash the Podcast Digest. Email the show feedback at thepodcastdigest at gmail.com. And you can find all the previous episodes and exclusive blog entries at the show's website, thepodcastdigest.info.